You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because I'm feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> oh, hey gang, welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin Duggan. What's up? Hey, let's not forget Kyle, the coach, Duggan. Somebody wake him up. There, there he is. is. I'm here. I am oh, super sleepy. We're recording this the morning after that game. Yeah. Yeah. And... Normally we record our episodes Monday night, folks, and we thought about recording it Monday night, but one of us was at the game. And if that was the case, yeah. we weren't going to be able to have the third stooge of this <laughs> podcast on. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we wanted to wait until the morning to record this. So Kyle. You were there at the game. We've got yeah. lots to talk about for this game. Obviously, we we all saw it. We were all there, uh, but you were actually there. You were at the game, and uh, who did you take with you? What did you experience? G- yeah. Give us the breakdown. Yeah, it was fun. I got to take my two oldest sons, um, so it was just me and them. So it was a much different experience than the home opener with you guys. I'm oh, sure. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paxi wasn't doing beer bongs. <laughs> no, he was not. We, Good. We um Good. we. <laughs> we got there a couple hours early just all also by the way i need to tell both of you guys this yes the parking at sofi sucks but we finally got in the correct lot oh. i'm not gonna tell everyone what lot it is because <laughs> then they're all gonna get the tickets you're gonna gatekeep but, it <laughs> yeah the lot that we're in now i so right when justin threw the pick to end the game we started to get up from our seats and walk out we were like one of the first ones to our car and out of the parking lot in two minutes we didn't stop Whoa. it was just yeah it was sick so that was a high. That was pretty much the highlight of the night. Was how fast I got out of there. <laughs> it's amazing to me how like you like when you're at a game and you have your kids and you're not like you're still like being in dad mode. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, easy yeah. to shift. Like, all right, well, I got to get these kids home safe. No right. time to get yeah. all shitty about the charge. It's also the cowboy fans. Like, you can't be mean when I have these two cute little kids. They're like, like several people walked. Like as I was walking by, they're like, ah, oh, better luck. You'll get them next week. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> So it was like That's good. when I'm with you guys and we've had a couple of drinks, then everyone wants to fight us and <laughs> it's all mean and angry. Just throwing but when you have your bodies little... against walls going like, <laughs> yeah. why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody sneezes and we're like, what'd you say? What'd you, what'd you say? <laughs> you say to me, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, that wasn't the vibe last night. It was nice. Franklin um, hit, hit, hit a little bit of a wall there mid second quarter. It started to get over it for sure. Started to mess with his brother, but he powered through. We stayed the whole game. Um, man, it was that. Yeah. It, okay. So not talking about the game yet, but just the whole experience was awesome. I mean, that's what football is. It's about bonding with with your friends and your family. And Absolutely. it was so much fun. And yeah. Getting to take them to the pro shop, buy some new gear that they were all pumped about. So yeah, we got souvenir, Coke cup. It's like the little stuff as a kid. That's the best part oh, about going to the we got, foam finger. Get, yeah, yeah. Franklin got one of the big gold chains because that just screams oh, Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got yeah, so we got that. We got the souvenir cup. We uh, it was just yeah, it was fun. They got to be excited. All the, the Monday night stuff is sick too. Like at when the lights shut off going into the fourth quarter, it got, got pitch black right when the clock hit zero, Ooh. and then it's just blue and yellow. And then Thunderstruck comes on and like all that stuff was, it was fun. It was, wow. it was a really fun night. I really, I still haven't been to a night game at SoFi, I mean, but no, like that no. is the best place to go for like, it's oh. like a rock concert. Well, and yeah, I'm curious because we saw that uh, the Chargers put out a tweet about having some kind of a light show at halftime. Yeah, yeah, Did like you an, see any of that? An app on your phone that your, your phone would do something? Uh, yeah, it was, I don't think, uh. I didn't get that memo and I don't think a lot of people got it Ooh. because as I was looking around, there was like a, um, it was like a breast cancer awareness halftime show. Okay. Um, and so it was like pink everywhere. They handed out these giant flags. And then as I looked around during the show, like during the like song and stuff, like people's phones were blinking, but that was, that was it. I think like if everyone would have done it, it probably would have been cool, but mm. it, not enough people did it. The memo. Not enough people got the memo. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the cowboy fans weren't on that memo train yeah. and they were most of the people there. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So right. that yeah. was the turnout. It was, quite a few yeah i mean 
as you look around, powder blue sticks out for sure. It's a nice color to have because even though few, we look mightier. Um, but like <laughs> the when few, you but mighty, when, we may be like few, when you look, but we're mighty. <laughs> when you look around the stadium, it, you it looks like there's a decent amount of powder blue. But then when you zoom zoom like <laughs> come hands. back to your come back to your section, you're like, wow, there's a lot of navy blue all around me right now. Oh, so yeah, I mean, in my section within two rows, there was probably. 15% were Charger fans, maybe 20%. Oh, wow, dang. Yeah. It's it is what it is. I'm I've given up on the that narrative. I'm a Charger fan. My boys are Charger fans. That's right, baby. My friends are Charger fans. So if they want to come and pay for our player salaries by watching games at our stadium, power to them. <laughs> there you go. What the positivity. Well, um, all right. Let's let's just dive in and let's talk about this game. Start it off so hot. hot. <laughs> Oh, we came out <laughs> so hot, so intense. It was like yeah. a three yeah. and out, right? It was yeah, yeah and a sack, the Cowboys. Sack, we got a sack. sack on third down. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember this because the way this game ended, you're like, oh wow, we played like crap. We had four sacks that game. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? And I Morgan I Fox had two. It's a big yeah. game for him. I don't want to say it. Everyone's gonna be mad at me for saying it, but if our defense plays like that in all the other games this year, we win those games. Yeah. That's just the way it is. We our record when we give up less than twenty seven is like eighteen and two. Right. So mm-hmm. the fact that our offense just couldn't get anything going, and the problem with the defense that I was mad about last night was that it's just the timing in which they give up the big plays or right. the penalty. Right. Derwin, we need Dude, you, buddy. If you Come if on. you take away those penalties, we had an elite defensive performance outside huh. of like the end of, at the end of the first half. Our safeties were 45 yards back there just doing nothing. Yeah. Right. But outside of that, like it wasn't that poor of a defensive performance. A lot of the times it was Dak just like we only rushed four. So he was able to, he's like ready to crumble a lot of the times. But then we just didn't have anyone there. So he was able to wiggle out and make a little right. play. So right. that, I mean, that was the majority of their offense. And they clearly didn't have, they didn't think the Cowboys, once they got in the red zone, could score on them. And I think they right. only did it, you know, they were 50% in the red zone. Mm-hmm. So. I, in terms of the game, the play, the game, like the defense, if we play like that every game, things will be good. We just, our offense didn't show up. Right. And I really feel not having Mike Williams really hurts this offense. Big yeah. Time. The passing, the passing game just looks discombobulated. No one looks confident in what, like, there's nobody open. <laughs> like, there's just nobody open. And unless, Justin f- buys time and gets out of the pocket and people start to scramble. It just didn't look like it was like a boom, boom. But you know, when you watch Patrick Mahomes, it's like, how is that guy so wide open? Like there's no one even near him. Right. Yeah. Like Travis Kelsey's just walking down the field by himself. It just, it feels like teams think that they can just man us up and they are, they can outside of Keenan Allen. Like they can just man us up and we can't get off of it for some reason. Right. Right. Because if from the game, from my view, it looked like they were just, bringing a decent amount of pressure and playing man coverage and pretty much eliminated most of our offensive ability outside of that first drive. Holy smokes. That was sick. Yeah. It was clicking on that first drive. And that was the bye week That drive was the bye week They had time to scheme up exactly how they wanted to do that. And it was the, the putt return by Darius to start yeah, everything great off. Field get, position. It was like, yeah. wow, this is going to be such a great day. Right. And then the offense just couldn't keep it going. And you got to give credit to the Dallas Cowboy defense. Cause that defensive line really kind of pushed us around on offense. We, we could not run the ball to save our lives. Right. No, we couldn't run the ball. No, we couldn't. And, and honestly, to be fair, neither really could Dallas. But uh, no. that's what I mean. Yeah, like <clears throat> our defense did. If you go back and look at this, besides those weird penalties and the, the one big 60-yard play, right? our defense was the best it's looked all season. Right. Okay, I have a hot take. Not a good take, but this is something I would be willing to say to his face so it clears my filters. Yeah. I think Derwin had the poorest performance on the defense last night. Yeah. He played really bad. Yeah. Do you think and a lot of it, injury? it's not an injury. No, it's, it was all mental, mental. stuff. Hmm. Like that Dak Prescott touchdown. He was supposed to fill for the quarterback keep. And he just, Oh, I see CD and he jumped to CD lamb. And there was a wide open scamper into the end zone. Mm-hmm. And then there's two, two personal foul penalties. Like, come on guy. Like that's not okay. Yeah. And like, he didn't really have like an impact play throughout the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like there was no, no dominating like tackle or pick or pass breakup or yeah. 
it was just kind of a bleh game from Derwin. I, maybe it's getting the, I, I don't know. I would like to find an excuse, but I think it's like throw that one in the garbage and let's do better next week type of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it's funny how comparative the performances were from both the quarterbacks and from the rushing standpoint. You know, Dak Prescott threw for 272 yards, one touchdown. Herbert threw for 227, two touchdowns, one interception. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, from the rushing side. It's basically what we had. Yeah. I mean, it, Dak Prescott was the leading rusher for the Dallas yep. Cowboys last night. Tony Pilar couldn't get anything going. You know, he was averaging two yards a rush. <laughs> you you cannot, Tony, uh, having him only rush for two yards a carry. Yeah, great job, dumb. defensive line. That's you guys great. did awesome. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, we held them to 20 points. Yeah. You know, like that's not it. We had a fourth down stop. Like we, we, we were, when you watch the game, there's some times though that I'm like, what? <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Did, did you guys see Tuli's pass breakup? Which one? Tuli Tui Pelotu dropped in coverage and he punched the ball so oh, hard it flew back yeah. 20 yards. Yeah. yeah. That was great. <laughs> he straight Thor punched that thing backwards that's and right. almost got picked off. Yeah. But like stuff like that where I'm like, cool play like sick why is Thule in coverage like why is this consistently happening where Thule or Khalil Mack are dropping into coverage I get it they're quote unquote outside linebackers Mm -hmm. it's not turned into turnovers them like oh tricked you you know it's like most of the time it just turns into like now you have Thule or one I think against the Dolphins we had like Khalil Mack lined up on Tyreek Hill it's like I don't know if that that reward is worth that risk, you know? Mm. Um, so it's just little things like that, that, man. And then some of the stuff on the defensive side that I got frustrated with, I think when I'm live and I have my kids um, and I don't have distractions outside of that, like if me and you two are there, we're having a couple of drinks, I can't focus. Like I, I'm just kind of all over the map, like a golden retriever. Yeah. Um, but last night, like sipping on my water, watching the game, I just, there are several times where I'm like, that's just, you just are trying to do too much. Yeah. Even, even our studs like Khalil Mack, they ran that, they ran that sweep on that, their first touchdown drive. We had them in third and six or third and seven down in the red zone. And they run this sweep. Khalil Mack is the edge guy and he kind of jumps inside to try to make yeah, the play in the backfield. Exactly what you're talking and about. the tight end just clips him inside. And then they had the edge super easy. Yeah. Just stay outside and trust that your your help is coming. Right. And then and the and the the second time down on their second score, they threw a little pass to CD on a slant, also on a third down. Eric Kendricks was supposed to be the whole player in the middle. He just saw the back start to leak and he just took off, opening vacant, like giant hole in the middle of the defense mm. that CD was able to make an easy catch. CD got laid out by K9. By the way, K9. Props to that guy. He's he's a yeah. great season. He's so balling. Far. He's playing. Yeah. yeah, he's not like he's not making giant mistakes. No penalties. Like, and he he put a little lick on CD. He caught that ball. Like that's what a middle linebacker does. If you're gonna catch the ball in the middle of the field, I'm gonna close gonna on feel, you. So that was pretty this. cool. You're yeah. gonna feel this in yeah. the morning. But it's just it's just like little technique stuff that was just like you're doing too much. Just like do your job and trust that everyone else is gonna do their job and it'll be fine. Like if they hit the back out of the backfield, you're in cover too. Right. Catch the ball. Everyone rallies up. It's third and six. Like right. you'll get there. But if you give up the slant, it's an easy first down potential touchdown. So I don't know the defense, like you give up 20 points. That's a good game. If you're 20 or less, I think that's a good defensive performance. We should win those games. Right. And we shut them down the second and third quarter. They kicked a field goal. Yeah. That was right. it. We just, we kind of folded at the end when our offense couldn't get, couldn't get anything going. Mm-hmm. Um, And thank God for our special teams, man. Well, another yeah, another just here pushing the blocker into yep. the guy like he's a oh, king of that. Let me tell you, the crowd, the did all the cowboy fans around me, they don't know anything about football, and they were crying to the high heavens that that wasn't a penalty. <laughs> yeah, and I was like screaming at him. I was like, "It was your own player, you guys. It's your own player." I was trying to like explain to them what was happening. Yeah. I was having a coaching moment in the yeah. stands with these poor people, drunk, and they were. <laughs> No, like a lot of them were like sweet people. They were just like, I don't get it. Why is that not a penalty? I'm like, okay, here's how here's how football works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but See what uniform that guy is wearing? It's the same as yours, <laughs> yeah. right? See? Yeah. It was, and that you was can't a, commit uh, a penalty on yourself. No, no, yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a big heads up play again. Yeah. Like, so 
special teams was huge. Made our kicks that coach let us kick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we would have made more if you just put them on the field, but yeah, they, I, I which transitions. What do we think about these daily fourth downs? How, where are we at right now? That one in the deep, like everyone was pissed and a whole bunch of people texted me. Like my friends from other teams, like texted oh, yeah. me. Um, it's it's hard to say because the way when we missed when we did went for it on fourth down inside the five or whatever right we basically controlled that entire quarter of football right and we had field position position the whole time yeah um so what the points could have been outside of that that's one of those you'll never know right so i'm not i'm not mad fully mad at that i there's a part of me that wants to go a little more conservative and just get some freaking points because we're always coming down to one possession games so it's like this weird balance, but it's clearly what we do, you, you know? Right. It's just, a, I think my dad said, my dad said it. It was like, it's just a bad habit. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, it's just like, that's just what it is. It's not so. a bad decision. It's a bad, bad habit. habit. Yeah. It's not yeah. a bad decision, bad habit. I'd be curious what Staley does when he goes to Vegas. Is he always just like betting and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All all in. In. yeah, it's <laughs> like, sir, you've got 18. Hit me. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome yeah. power. So it's absolutely. <laughs> So, I don't know. Oh, Brandon Danger Staley. <laughs> Danger's his middle name. My middle I, name but yeah. I saw a stat last night where he there's two other coaches that go for it on fourth down more than him. And right now the the That's what baffled me. Yeah. There's there's the, the whole thing. I don't know who it was, but it said I don't know. The stat came up that said that are they the, good? the third go for it more on fourth down. Uh, I don't know. Third in the it's league. It's a hidden stat that I'm gonna use to my advantage right now. We'll find and out. Say, yeah, we'll find out. But basically <laughs> he is like Fourth and Staley is all anyone ever talks about how stupid our coach is and all that. So, right, I don't know. It's, you got to live and die by fans it, are, though. Fans like, are pissed, but it is what it is. Hindsight's twenty twenty. If you don't make it and you go like, "Well, we should have kicked it," it's like, "Well, you, but you could have had a touchdown." Yeah, and you were so deep in it. And to be fair, after that, uh, after we didn't get it on fourth down, Dallas couldn't do anything. Couldn't Almost got shit. a freaking safety. We own that. We owned field position for the rest of that quarter, pretty right. much. So, so I it's, mean, it, give it and take it. Yeah, we just don't have fourth down plays. Like we we it doesn't see we're not good at fourth downs. <laughs> like I I totally understand we're that logic with and, it this year. Yeah. And that decision like yeah, you want the 6 points instead of the 3. You also if you don't get it, you pin them deep. I get it. But our percentage on fourth down is inc- has to be incredibly low. I think it's got to be like 2 for 10 maybe 20%. Yeah, like it's we're just low. Because we do we're it so not, much that it, it's going to slant. We're not doing the tush push at all. Like, if we had that in our playbook, sick. Like, right. let's go. Run, go well, for it. If, if Herbert's finger wasn't hurt, I mean, because he's still right. really favoring not. Oh, he, on but that. even he went down hard yeah. trying to avoid landing on his hand. He yeah. landed on like eight he other just parts. Let of his, his shoulder body. go. He's just yeah. like, all right, we'll let this shoulder be what it is. I don't want to hurt my finger. Right. You know, it's kind of sad watching him do that. Like, he's just a tough SOB. Yeah. Like, I get the strategy of going for it on fourth down. I like being aggressive. But once you get to the point where, hey, we don't have fourth down plays that we really like right now, let's get these points. Like, yeah. that's, that's in my opinion. It's like if, if you're getting half or 60%, okay, but. We're not even close. Like we're we are missing every single time. It feels like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and even looking on the receiving side as well, Keenan Allen, seven receptions, eighty-five yards, one touchdown. He's awesome. He's he was very clutch. I mean, honestly, looking at the game because what was what was Justin Her? I don't have the his uh, completion percentage, but I mean that was really the big twenty-two part. for thirty-seven. Twenty-two so. for thirty-seven. He was so, in the sixty percent range, which is normally pretty good. But there were so many. Oh, moments. he had he, he left 70 80 yards out there at wide least open if not more it because was, we've like, never seen him do that yeah normally no. those wide open keenan allen passes it's on the money and for some yeah. reason they were just over the head or too deep and uh and and that was just uncharacteristic of justin herbert so i don't know what to chalk that up to uh I, hopefully this is just the one uncharacteristic justin herbert game we have this season and next week we we shore it up and get back on track i'm if you want to chalk it up to justin having an off game i'm feeling pretty good that we can give kansas city a good run for their money yeah next week. i still can like it, we just need to not make bonehead p- uh, plays on defense and we can do good things and the penalties were so there were so many penalties now i'm not saying like oh they were ticky tacky or if they were you know 
right or wrong penalties. There was just so for both teams. many for both sides. They wanted to, yeah. those it refs out of wanted control. to play last night. They really should give like ref stats at the beginning of games. Like, okay, well, they've got this crew, this, <laughs> yeah. this ref. I, I'd love going, what to look for. It would prep 20 us. penalties a game average. Because yeah. <laughs> they know? were calling stuff that like, they were saying most, even Troy Aikman, who was the most biased commentator God, in the so world. That was so hard to, to listen to. Um, but they were talking. You guys got to turn on Matt. You got to turn on Money and um, yeah, we, DJ. We, we just got to sync it up. Right? Yeah, you got to sync yeah. it. If we could um, sync it, the problem is all these people on Twitter post as soon as touchdowns happen. So if you're not right on it, you're get screwed. off Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> True. Very wise. Very but wise. Kyle, this. <laughs> What's that so app idea? isn't even on my phone anymore. It's gone. So if you've tried to message me there, I'm sorry. I don't have it anymore. I think it's the devil. <laughs> the devil. It was it was a cesspool last night. Everyone was really mad. <laughs> but hey, you could, it's good to hear the frustrations. Like, they're fans. They I was be, frustrated, too. They wouldn't be pissed off and saying what they're yeah. saying if they right. weren't yeah. in love with this team. So right. I right. totally get it. Absolutely. 100%. So we'll. Hopefully- I, wait, I did have a question. Yes. I, on two of the penalties. Yes. One, the roughing the passer that we had on Dak was that ridiculous? Or yeah. Not? Yeah. It he, was. He, did, it, he like it, shouldered it, him in the body. He said he that even he him. took two. They took two extra steps. Yeah, they broke down the the penalty to be like you it's have slow to mo. like. Yeah, you're like after that second step. So technically, he did it, but it was, it felt ticky tack as shit to me. In yeah. live, it's like he and he didn't hit him hard. He just kind no, of bumped him. They literally those refs wanted to play last night. They really and then did. the other one that I had a question on because I'm gonna I will say this. So if I your like replay system is absolute garbage. It's so bad, <laughs> yeah. dude. The the um the punt where we got that punt where it was the muff punt oh, that yeah. whole thing at the end of the game they didn't show it one time no way. really we didn't get one single replay of that of that play we were just sitting there in the dark i was texting you yeah guys. you were texting me i was like i think okay okay and then you're like and then i saw the field. i saw the offense they don't show that because the offense is already on the field their defense comes on the field yeah. five minutes before they actually make the call they already wow. told the coaches that it's turnover but the illegal man downfield that happened twice that justin was... i know those are hot checks like he's just he sees that something he likes gets it and throws it seemed like he threw it so fast. How was there a man three yards downfield? Uh, let's was see. What Zion. was the one? There was Zion. And... He, it looked like Zion was thought it was a different play because he got up. No, no, no. The... They were. Those were run plays that Justin yeah. just sees his wide receiver. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is open. He just gets it and throw it. But you get it and throw it so fast. How are those guys even downfield? Yet? Zion Zion was quick, dude. I When we watched that, that <laughs> play was so fast. Zion got up He there. was legitimately at the linebacker yeah. literally he got up oh, there like he clearly didn't hear the check that's what happened and that's yeah. the problem with not having home field advantage when the crowd's no, he quiet didn't, but that's the thing he didn't call a check in his mind he's just i'm throwing this you don't have to check anything usually because yeah. you're we don't have freaking tyreek hill at guard getting up to the second level that fast right well zion's a psycho athlete because he got up there faster yeah. than any other lineman got i've it. ever seen get to the second yeah to the second level. Yeah, if I feel bad for anybody, it's Josh Palmer. The guy had at least like a hundred yards taken away from him because of some penalties. Oh, like, yeah. Just so many big All catches day. that like it was like, yeah, oh, there's a penalty. It's like, eh, yeah. oh, there's a penalty for well, when even the commentators were saying how like, wow, they're really, you know, I've seen that play happen a whole bunch of times this last Sunday, and no one called that. Like they were just they're, oh, really? They're, 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 yeah, that's what Aikman said. Yeah, it's it, and that's the problem is there's so many inconsistencies between referee teams that like dude ai why don't we just figure this out i mean you would think that they would get to a point where they would incorporate technology into penalties in some way a little robot form. ref that like has wheels that like rolls Something. around the field but i'm in um it is what it is uh looking over at twitter uh chris and i don't know <laughs> how to pronounce his last name it's either ream or rhyme feel okay. the rhythm feel the rhyme let's go rhyme okay get on up <laughs> it's, it's charger time it's charger time <laughs> Uh, tweeted out a quote from Brandon Staley in his postgame presser saying, our inability to run the football allowed their rush to really express itself. And I expressed myself when the game was over by crying. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't cry. I did. Did you? Did you like walk into the room? In <laughs> You're like, I'm going to go do the dishes. <laughs> My heart is leaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are those dishes coming? Kevin? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justin, in his uh, post-game presser uh, on his performance, said, I missed a couple of receivers. I missed some passes. I left a lot of plays out there. I can't miss those like that. 
Yeah, it's true. true. It just was what it was. I think it's an outlier game, weird game for him. Like, Hopefully. that's a good defense with a really good pass rush. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, hope, I don't expect us, out of all the games we've ever watched him play, we've never seen him miss two throws. And how lucky are we that that happens to most quarterbacks? Yeah. And we're watching yeah. this and being like, oh, wow, Josh, <gasps> what's going on? How did that on, happen? Yeah. yeah, what are you doing, man? Like, he's <laughs> been perfection for so long. You got to, you could chalk up one game to being like, he just wasn't on that night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Justin on his finger said, I didn't think too much about it. I might've been, uh, might've been a guarding mechanism. Like so when, he, I, when he fell down, when he fell down, yeah. he kind of was like leaving his hand up in the air and like letting the other one. And they did it in slow-mo. And then his finger, it, do, it probably didn't feel good. Cause when he landed, it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's like, ouch. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see. Khalil Mack on the game said it's frustrating coming off the bye week understanding what we had in front of us, the opportunity we had on Monday night football, we let ourselves down. We let the fans down and ownership and everybody in the building. Um, and it's going to be a quick turnaround for Kansas city, six days to prepare. So we got to flush this one after tonight and just get ready for the next one. Game five, got to flush it and get ready for the next one. Flush it. Yeah. yeah. Flush it, baby. Pound. Yeah, flush it. Know. Just like that turd. Get yeah. That shit out of here. I mean, that and that's the thing is here. like this whole weekend of football there are now no longer any teams that have perfect records nope. so it's anything can happen on sunday in that there's no reason to think why that can't be the same for the chargers as well to come out and win some games that we expect to win or hope to win and lose games that ah, we had no business being in like it's just it, it anything can happen yeah during football and guess what we're going to flush that shit. Got to flush Chicken it. Butt. We got a game coming up pretty soon. And I'm very <laughs> yeah. excited. Yeah, oh, yeah. Are you guys going? We sure as f are, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Sorry, good, I don't good. know why I went all like, aggressive. Like, you got excited. Yeah. Shut your f ass. <laughs> <laughs> you shut your mouth. You know we're going. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah we're going. I'm excited. Absolutely. Um, well, you can go on over to our Patreon, folks. Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. And we've got a couple new patrons to shout out. We've got Greg Farnan and Jim Sands. Welcome to the party. Newest pal. patrons Thanks, over at Patreon. Thank you guys for coming on over. Check out all the funny vids and stuff we've got going on over there. And if you don't want to go to Patreon.com, that's totally fine. Go on over to our regular website, ChargerChat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions in Ask Bolt Fam. So go check out ChargerChat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? It's a good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash chargerchat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. 
It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Hey guys, we got to take a second to talk about something here at the Charger Chat Podcast that we're really excited about, and that's Bolts Bids. Bolts Bids is available through the official Chargers website and the official Chargers app. On the app, scroll about halfway down until you see the Bolts Bids banner, say that five times fast, and you're going to find all kinds of Chargers memorabilia. Team-issued jerseys, helmets, uh, game-used balls, player-worn gear, uh, what else is there? Player signed gear and much, much more from both current and former players. So make sure to check out Bolt's bids either on the app or the website to see all the amazing pieces they have that's updated regularly. And you're probably going to want to go there right now because Bolt's bids has consistent giveaways. You just need to download the official Chargers app, scroll about halfway down until you see the Bolt's Bids banner, then click Filters and select Giveaways. And if you don't want to use the app, even though that's the easiest and most preferred method, you can also click the link in our description or go to chargers.com slash Bolt's Bids and then click Filter, Offer Type, and choose Raffle, then hit Apply. Now, you will want to make sure your account info is filled out and updated with your name, email address, card info, and mailing address because the winner will be auto-selected and notified via the email address they have on your account if you win. And the reason you need your card info in there is because you will have to pay for shipping, but that's an absolute steal for these giveaways. So make sure you go to the app or the link down in the description for your chance to enter. So be sure to go to Bolt's Bids for your Chargers memorabilia and bolt up. All right, folks. Well, it's a quick episode because we just had some football. There, There's no segments to dive into. We've got work to do here shortly. So let's just go right into Ask Bolt Fam. <laughs> Time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. I love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And uh, before we get into it all, whoa, <laughs> you guys created a tidal wave of cyclone, uh, cyclone, a cyclonic uh, amount of questions. Uh, some of them good, some of them, uh, mediocre and some of them, I didn't even want to touch with the 10 foot pole. So, yeah. and I just have a PSA real quick on yes. Twitter. If you're listening to this, if you go onto our Twitter, when we do an ask bolt fam and somebody says something nice or wants to talk about their team on yeah. ask bolt fam and you go in there and pick fights with them, you're getting f***ing blocked. Yeah. So bye bye. It's not what that is for. No, don't go. Somebody asked for a happy birthday and they got yelled at. <laughs> Like that guy can go somewhere else and he's yeah, no exactly. longer part of it. So just a warning. Mm -hmm. There's no like I'm not no hard feelings towards you. You're just not gonna be able to see our post. Anymore. Yeah. And, and to those that do ask questions, again, no hard feelings. If I don't say your name, you know, we're we're kind of working on a short timeline. We've got a lot of questions, and sometimes uh succinctity is the best, you know, short and sweet. We love those here at Charger Chat. Mwah. Those are perfect, um, and they got to have questions. So if you, we also love the eight-part series novels too. Though. Well, on occasion, <laughs> on a rarity, <laughs> if your name is Senior Snappy, we love those over here. But yeah, um, yeah, for for those that aren't aware, like it's Ask Bolt Fam. You know, we want to create some conversation. This isn't shout out Bolt Fam, and this isn't let me express all my feelings, Bolt Fam. Like it's yeah. Ask Bolt Fam. So. If I don't get to your question or if I don't shout out your name, I apologize. We're just trying to kind of keep, trying to keep this baby moving. These Monday night games going. throw our whole thing off. And it does. It yeah. Usually these off. things take like three hours to make, and we yeah. have like 90 minutes. To yeah, I'm on the clock. You got work so, to do. Yeah. Um, let's start it off here with Daryl21, who asked the question. My guys, we're finally here, ready for a Monday night and great news. My defibrillator arrived just in time. As I write this Sunday afternoon, I'm so amped up as we all are for this game that my brain has overloaded. So I'm going to go on a different direction. My question this week, guys, is non-charger related. Point blank. Help me with your thoughts on this bullshit we're seeing with the refs constantly helping out the stomach-churning quiz show. If. If a coach had the balls to actually call out the refs during the post-game press conference, what do you guys think would be the undeserved punishment for it? A fine? Something else? Obviously would make for a fun-ass viral video, though. The past few weeks before, Jets coach Sala, Vikings coach O'Connell were both screwed big time, and all us fans are seeing it. 
To their credit, they stayed silent. But I'm feeling a coach at some point is going to go postal. Okay, boys, let's smack the Cowboys and bolt the f*** up. K, love you, bye. I like questions that came before the game. <laughs> They're going to have a much different vibe. It was a better time, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, I'll take the one. Simpler time. Um, but I thought it was interesting that talking about calling out the refs and refs were on in a fire game last where night. there that had to be like an abnormal amount of flags yeah. compared to any of the other games that we saw this weekend. Yeah. And then just if you go back and look at some of it, if you want to get all ticky tacky and you want to call absolutely everything, call everything. That's because the there were yeah. a couple plays. I think there was the one to Palmer in the back of the end zone that we missed that he got. He got shoved there at the last second. Yeah. Um, Q, uh, Q on that last interception, he got just manned out of the way. Right. So if you're going to call it, I'll call it all. Don't just pick the times you want to call it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You can't call out refs. It's just never going to be a good thing. Yeah. Then you become that coach that was whiny. And then those refs, the whole, they're, they're a brotherhood too. They're going to be on high alert. Oh, you don't like our calls? Oh, here's twice as many. Yeah. You know, so it's, exactly. it's, it's not going to, it's not going to turn out well. It's a catch 22 in, in that situation. So really, refs are like the mafia. You just, you exactly, you're That's stuck. Exactly what it is right now. You're stuck, right? There's nothing you can do. There's no way out. You got to pay your dues. You suck it up and take it on the chin. Yeah. Make that payment every month. And that's why, <laughs> that's why Bosa is totally fine arguing with them. Oh, yeah. That's, it's, it's, yeah. it's family. The mafia. Yeah. He's used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I have to imagine it would just be a fine. I don't know that they would, the NFL would. Uh, there's do there's going to be some that. behind the doors kind of conversation. Oh, for sure. Who knows what that is? But it calls it calls out the legitimacy of the games when they do that. It, yes, it brings the NFL shield into question. Right, Look, and it, you never bring the shield brand. into question. Yeah. There's protocol. You have people in the Chargers organization that are that will send in like letters. They'll send in emails of hey, right, like yeah. what the hell, like what's going on because. That's how it works even in Pop Warner. We get bad calls or something happens that's not right. You send in an email to the conference and they look at it and they review it. And if they need to take action, they take action. It's the same thing. Like yeah. it's, if if they thought it was that bad, there's behind the scenes ways to do it where you don't just blow them up totally in front of right. people on a press conference. Exactly. But hey, great question, Daryl. Thank you for asking it. Moving on now to Scotty B63 and just got a shout out, Greg Farnan, one of our newest patreon members you guys are in the same vein but when it happens like this you guys are kind of in the same vein i'm gonna go with probably the more succinct of the bunch and that's scotty b63 who asks the question is derwin james becoming a liability with his consistent penalty kind of yeah it's uh it's hard it's hard to say it man but he is not he isn't i'm not excited when he's out there. Like All right. Used Go to. through your filter. If Derwin was right here on the screen, I'm, I'm not excited when you're out on the field, Derwin, like you stress me out because you always have a 15 yard penalty at the worst time. Mm -hmm. It's on yeah. a third down. It's in a place where we just need to get off the field and you're going kamikaze. And we yeah. just, and just miss, he's just not in the right places. I don't, I don't know what's going yeah. on, man. Yeah. It's not the all pro, you know, pro bowler we're used to seeing. I miss, you know, Derwin getting sacks. I miss Derwin getting interceptions. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's just seeing him getting those. I mean, that's the thing. Like, we saw a lot of guys this last game that were just going 100 miles an hour, but not thinking where they're going. Like, just running in as fast and as hard as they can, including Derwin James. And sometimes that can work. And other times you get a penalty for it. He's been getting them every game. Yeah. He hasn't had a game this year that he's played in where he hasn't gotten a personal foul. Penalty. Yeah. And that's, you can't do that. Yeah. No. Don't hurt that's the team. Big. 15 yards is huge. It's huge. Well, and, and they're all on third down. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it, they're very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> so so it's very, yeah. I'm third down. Yeah. Oh, tell me, boys. See? We're rolling on drives, eh? <laughs> it's almost a little Seinfeld too, and like, and they're all out there down. What's the deal with that? <laughs> so, all right, Scotty B sixty three, Greg Farnan, uh, we're kind of with you that yeah. it's becoming hey, a bit consistent. Can he turn it around? Yes, of course. He's smart enough. Just lower your head a little bit and move it to your shoulder and yeah. put it right in there, and you'll be fine. Yeah. So let's move it on now to the next one, Salty Sports Guy. Who asked the question? Well, that sucked. Kind of numb to it. So not a lot of pain or sadness. Just more frustration and uh, disappointment. 
Seemed like our O-line can play pretty decent for 58 minutes, but those last two minutes just seem to implode. It's become a trend. What's the deal with that? That was perfect timing. What's the deal? <laughs> What's the deal with that? That's a good question. Um, I mean, they're tired. I got to imagine. Like, <laughs> yeah, last two minutes, everything becomes predictable. You're not going to run the ball, so those guys pin yeah. their ears back and they can just go. Like, oh, there's right. not there's when Michael Parsons knows the path, it's going to be hard to stop him all night. And they did a pretty damn good job, right? Um, they, but they then kept, when you yeah. go ahead. No, no, they kept him away from Slater. I will say that. He was on Pipkins all night long. Yeah. But I yeah. mean, you got Michael Parsons one side, and is it Demarcus Lawrence on the other side, who's another huge name? So I mean, they've got great pass rushers as well. That that's a good defense. They're giving yeah. up like less than 10 points a game for the first four weeks. Yeah. Obviously, they got shellacked by the 49ers last week, but yeah. that's not a bad defense by any means. No. So it's uh it, the, 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 the last two minutes of games have been like, uh, what the hell is going on here? Just kind guys? Of like, yeah, it seems like a position where I always felt like so much confidence in our team to go down there, and at least get a field goal. Yeah. And we haven't done it yet this year. Yeah. When it's, I'm not saying play calling, but it's a different play caller in those two minutes. So right. curious yeah. what that means, or he just needs to get on it and figure out the fourth downs and figure out the two minutes. Yeah. And we'll be okay. We'll be all right. But a uh, great question, Salty Sports Guy. Thank you for asking it. Let's move it on now to Darius, who asked the question. Who what do you think about QJ at this point? And what words would you share with all the haters calling him a bust already? I love him and understand he's a development piece. I definitely expected more interaction at this point. But I mean, at the beginning of the season, you're talking about a wide receiver room that's already pretty deep. QJ felt like, okay, this is our next year wide receiver star because there's no way we're going to be able to pay both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen 30 mil a piece and still have like a well, full team. But that is tough though, because he's, it is. he's in the lineup now. Like No, yeah. but he's not. <laughs> he's on the field like half the time. It's, no, I mean like he's, he's supposed to be playing, exactly, but he's yeah. being pulled. And I don't understand why. Because I saw a lot of times where he was matched up man on the far side of the field. He just needs to beat the one guy. Yeah. And... Justin's not, I don't know if he's not looking at him. I don't know how often he's open. Yeah. You know, I don't know what is going on, but it's, yeah. it's not anything exciting. It's, it's hard, to, hard to call a receiver a bust when he, had, like, if he was dropping balls and they were bouncing off and they were getting picks and I don't know how you call him a bust when we haven't thrown to him. Like, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not a thing. Yeah. It, we've, I mean, we certainly have thrown to him, but it's been minimal at best. And I think, I feel like there's a lot of, throws that get tossed his way that are like Justin is like going down or being chased it's the, it's and the it's Mike, a desperate it's the throw. Mike William desperation throw that Mike catches right and so, so those are really to tough compare. balls for him to catch like they're not just like oh they're on the money and he's it's hitting them in the hands and they're dropping it's like no he's having to like stretch and twist his body in ways that he wasn't prepared to do and to he, try to make a catch sometimes it works Sometimes it doesn't. And he's just a, not as big of a wide receiver as Mike. He got literally pushed away from that interception last night. Right. So he's just not that big a body. And I think Justin just doesn't know how to use him yet. Yeah. I don't I don't know how we're going to use him yet. Like, right. You know, right now it's the Palmer and, and, and Allen show. Right. Um, and I think Dar I am surprised they didn't use Darius Davis more last night. I am night. too. Like, because they were trying to get out in space and do that kind of stuff last night, but not once to Darius. Yeah. So... That's just interesting. I don't know. It is. And it's and it's just frustrating to see you get a first round talent. First round talent should be contributing immediately. You expect and, it. Yeah. I mean, he's certainly in the lineup. He's on the field, but you're just not seeing any production come out of him quite. How yet. would you have felt if Thule was our first round pick? Awesome. Yeah. I think great. that's a great first round pick. <laughs> that's a rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, like and that's as much as point. Quentin hasn't done a lot, um, man, Thule looks good. Yeah, yeah. he does. So, he's psycho. Watch. He's psycho. Yeah. yeah. He goes yeah, he psycho is. mode all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it is what it is at this point. If it it's too if early to be a bust. It's too early to be a bust. There's still so many games that he could yeah. come out and just find his groove yeah. for why he hasn't found the groove yet or why they haven't incorporated him yet. I can't I can't speak to and him because I don't know the, the answer. Maybe to that. it's matchups. Maybe we maybe should run into a yeah. defense that he is gonna be able to thrive against. Maybe that's the situation. Yeah. Um, okay, hang played, on. So we played some Mike Williams games. stats. Tell me, tell me this 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 sounds right. This is like an instant Google search. Just maybe off. Okay, Mike Williams rookie season 
and showing he had 11 catches for 95 yards in his first 10 games. 11 catches for 95 yards in his first 10 games? Yeah, and it, he played 10 games his rookie season, and that was his stat line. I'm trying to remember who all we had. Because we certainly oh, had man. Keenan Allen at that point. Let me see if I can go back fast enough. If that's true, that. but here the only thing is, if that's truth, like, was Mike Williams a bust? He might have been injured. Let's see. He played 10 games. That's still enough. They're already calling... Q a bust after, after three games of starting. Yeah, right. Um, so. I think he's only had like 63 yards or something like that. His, his first couple of games. So I don't know. It's just too, too early soon. to be a bust. Just too it's early, just way man. too. Yeah. So his, in 2017, he played in 10 games. He had targeted 23 times with 11 catches for 95 yards on the season. No mm-hmm. touchdowns. Interesting. That's, it's just a rookie season. Like, it's not like always a boom, ready to rock and roll, and he needs some time to figure things out. Yeah. We'll get it. It'll happen. Darius, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Gene Scott, who asked the question. Do you think Derek Angley, not specifically being in charge of secondary, has affected the boats? I uh, that that's the one part of the defense that I don't know what's going on. And yeah. I think it's still the play call. Seeing guys lined up 25 yards back, 30 yards back off the yeah, ball. I don't understand. Deep. And just immediately starting to run back like uh, Marlo did a couple times last night. I was watching Kyle was texting with you. He's like, Marlo just started running. Like, like what, what are we playing? Like, what, what is the point of this? And why leave the middle of the field so open for slants and all that? Because that's what we do. We just give up. We give that up all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, right? if you're... If you're in a two man, so if it's cover two man, you have two high safeties and man underneath, that's fine. You're taking away the the deep ball, the explosive play. You want to stay deeper than the deepest and come forward to make plays on the ball. But if you're just in a true zone, you can't have safeties back that far, or else it creates this giant gap between the underneath guys and the deep guys. So if it's like a true zone, I I, I don't know. It's too you can't do that because there's too much just drop up over the state over the corner under the safety type of looks right um in middle of the field should be be able to for the most part you have help from your linebackers it's when you get deep middle but again if you're in two man it's fine it's just sometimes it seems like we're in a true zone and those guys are just flying out of there terrified of the deep ball and i i mean we suck against the deep ball so maybe they just have been chewed out so much that it's like i'm i'm getting back here and so i'm keeping (laughs) everything in front of me yeah that that's hard to say um that those are all great points yeah i've noticed the secondary really is like they're five or ten yards back from like the first down mark yeah like, there's some weird decisions on like because i thought i saw davis a couple times last night on like third down lining up at the the first down marker mm-hmm. yeah like, and then backpedaling yeah like what are we doing like that's not gonna like i don't understand yeah well, it's above our pay grade there, uh, Gene Scott, but thank you for asking the question. Uh, let's move it on now to Amber Dorman, who asked the question. Hi, guys. Not a question, but the only positive about tonight's loss. My older brother was a huge Dallas fan. He was active duty, so we didn't get to watch many games together. Last time we played week two of 2021, we were able to text back and forth for the whole game. We lost 20 to 17, and I told him I'd buy him a beer the next time I saw him. Sadly, he lost the battle with mental health in December of 2021, so I never got to buy him a beer. To have an identical score of 20 to 17 feels like a little hello from my big bro. Anyhow, on to the Chiefs. We played a tough defense and hung in there. We will be okay. I just know it. K, love you, bye. So sorry about that, Amber. Yeah, that's yeah. that's so tough. But hey, that uh, that is a very awesome way to look at that. You know, like you're sending, getting some love from somewhere else from yeah. From, yeah. from the big bro. So yeah, I'm so sorry. Very very sad to hear about that. And um, it is nice to try to find that kind of positivity in, in a mm. game like that. You know, it is. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad we lost. This was this was for this Amber. Was for Amber, yeah, hundred percent. What if we would have won 2017? That's also same kind of vibe. Then it would have been Amber giving a middle finger to her big brother. No, no, no. <laughs> Still hello. No, Still man, a hello. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We appreciate you sharing that with us, Amber. And I'm with you. We 100 percent are going to get through this. Yeah. And we're we're going to be competing to be have a playoff spot at the end of the year. It's just the way it is. It's the way we do it. It's never easy. It's never fun. Yeah. But it's going to happen. <laughs> it's never fun. We hate this so much. <laughs> We've done this for five years. It's never fun. Never happened. <laughs> 
I guess why we've turned into such the clown car of podcasts. We you really, really have are. to keep it fun. So Amber, again, so sorry to to hear about it, but glad you were able to find uh, the yeah. silver lining there. And and we're with you. We're we're happy that you have that silver lining to go with. Absolutely. Um. All right. Let's move it on now to Big Red Bolts fan. Oh shit! Who asked the question? What was that thing that the picnic basket theming bear once said? It's like deja vu all over again. I keep watching my favorite pigskin posse go out into the gladiator arena with some of the best talent in all the land and yet allow their opponent to rise up and strike them down smartly. I keep seeing our men's momentum getting choked out by tight end sweeps that are slower developing than a Raiders fan puberty. <laughs> I keep seeing our God of thunder and lightning getting smacked around while a mixed uh, Mick Meow Meow the third forgets that his only job is to block out what he does is politely step aside for his friend, Mr. Pass Russia. My question is, how many times can we stand there and get stabbed in the eye with a soldering iron before we finally say enough is enough? Put on our blue and gold big boy panties <laughs> and stop playing like we belong at the cool kids table. FTR, bolt the f*** up and let's take this loss out on the guy who runs like he has caca in his pants next weekend. Kay, love you. Bye. I would love to be a dominant football team and just... You know. Everybody would. Everybody I would. Just, I don't even need it every <laughs> game. I just need like maybe like once a month to have a dominant performance, you mm -hmm. know, where both sides of the ball are working and fun to watch, you know? Because <laughs> honestly, it was like the defense. I had fun watching the defense last night, except for a couple plays. I had fun watching the defense mm -hmm. and the offense couldn't do anything. It was yeah. so weird. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I'd love to join the the cool kids table. It'd be fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to imagine that the message has to be getting home to these guys that like, we have got to stop making mistakes. Like, you know, the plan, you know what we're supposed to do. Like, why are we making such massive mistakes at such inopportune times? Like, is it the pressure? Is it too much pressure that you just go like, uh, I got to make the right call. Oh God. And I blow it up and, or, or screw it up. Like, I think, you know what I think? I think Derwin James is just a little too tall. I think that's why he's getting up in this area. You know what I mean? I'm, that's what I'm chalking it up to. The personal fouls are a height take. thing. <laughs> My hot take, Derwin's too tall. Derwin, stop wearing high heels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Derwin, we need to, might need to chop a couple inches off to get you in that chest region, less head, and thoughts. Hey, I'm, I'm thoughts. spitting them. There's just thoughts spewing out of my brain. That's fine. Um, that's fine that's fine that's <laughs> yeah. what the show is okay. we just spew our thoughts okay. we just think out loud <laughs> we do yeah filter or not um <laughs> so i gotta imagine they gotta just it, it last year last year what were we we were like four and three going into the bye like we were like one or, or how let's say we won the first game lost the next two games so at one point we were one and two and then we kind of had a bit of a win streak so it's like we're three and two right now. We're past our three. bike or two. And three, we are definitely me. not three and two. That would be nice. That would, that would be, cool. be nice. Well, we're two and three and it's not the end of the world. There's still a chance for still us a, to go out and win some of these games. Still have two thirds of the season left. Yeah. So, and every single game is one score. Every one. Yeah. So, you just got to prepare yourself for that. Single. Yeah. I'm one. hoping we beat up the Packers or some of these the bears, teams that, the bears, like I hope these games, we don't play to our opponent and we can actually get some solid wins and have a nice fun Sunday or yeah. Monday or Thursday, whatever primetime game we're on. And you can remember we got a lot more primetime games. There's so like, yeah, at least five more primetime. It's time to step out, it up. And if not more get better, cause they're going to be making fun, Troy Aikman's going to be making fun of us a lot more <laughs> than he already did before. <laughs> he the already game shut started. up Troy. Yeah. Um, Troy, Troy's right. bucket. Big Red Bolts fan, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Rolling Thunder 26. Check back. Ask the question. Looking at our schedule ahead and how the team has performed so far, are playoffs even a realistic goal still? The top teams in the league can do things we simply can't. Control the line of scrimmage, both offense and defense, play consistent defense, and simply execute when it matters the most. 
I wouldn't say we can't control the line of scrimmage. We they couldn't do anything on us yesterday at the mm-hmm. line of scrimmage. Like our defensive line played great. Yeah, they had like twenty. He had twenty two yards per carry. Right. So I there's a, there's certain things like when you watch the game, you're like I had to go back and think about what happened because I was so pissed at the right. defense right. for that last quarter. Right. But if you go back and look at it, we have these things set up. We need the offense and the defense to both be playing good fo- football at the same time. Right. That's what we're missing right now. Yeah. You'll get one playing a good game. If we would have played that game when we're offenses cooking a little bit, right. they're not getting 20 points. Right. They're if you not saw the offense that we saw in week one, that's a different But that, that offense with this defense, yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah. We have time. We are, we've had this record before where we still made the playoffs. There's still a lot of football left. Yeah. They just need to get on the same Sorry, you're gonna have to bleep this out. Fucking page. Okay. We're about five F bombs into this. And I just like, want to give you the heads up. <laughs> he he felt that one coming. Yeah, I felt yeah. it was it was bubbles. It was sneak up oh, on you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, there's still playoffs. We still have plenty so, of opportunities. So five games in. We're so far away, man. Yeah. It's there's it, just it so feels... many more wins and losses in our future. It's for we have 12 games to play. Yeah. yeah. We're not going undefeated. So if that's yeah. no. if you listen to us all off, we were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. Hey, it's not the first time. It's not the <laughs> no last. <laughs> but that's all we could say right now is, you know, we, we're still one and oh in the AFC West. 14 and three. Guess what? It, let's go beat the Chiefs and be two and oh in the AFC West. Yes. Right. How rad would that be? Yes. Just let's beat be the Chiefs. Just let's be them. bummed about it for today. Yeah. You listen to this. Be bummed about it. Guess what? Wednesday. Chicken butt. At, Exactly. That's what chicken butt. We're moving on. Guess what? Chicken butt. Chicken butt. Beat the Chiefs. Go beat the Chiefs. Yeah. There you go. Rolling Thunder 26. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Lexi M. Who asked the question. Well, our defense was significantly improved when Sebastian came back in. Can we say four sacks? Can't say I'm surprised at how well they did considering JC is gone. I'm so looking forward to Herbert and the offense finding a rhythm by next game. It's a long streak of wins we need to keep up. This team is going to kill me, but I'm happy to go die for them. Anyway, I've rambled enough. My question is, what would each of you do to improve the offense's team building out of the following, or you can make up your own? This is awesome. A, take them to an obstacle course and team lunch. Sounds nice. B, skydiving and crocheting clash. C, cooking and acting classes. Me, I'm taking the cooking and acting classes. They can learn to make a few different kinds of victory brisket and use their acting on the field to play even better. Can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. F*** the Cowboys, Chiefs, and Raiders. I would say the donkeys, but they don't matter. K, love you, boy. P.S. Don't come for me. I'm behind and don't know if we won. <laughs> we- <laughs> nice. A little tag at the end. I love it. Yeah. Love it, Lexi. Um, all right. This so a good question. How do team you... building for the offense? Exercise 99. <laughs> what do we got? What is that? Exercise That's from uh, it's from Flight of the Concords. It's oh. Uh, it's business. It's business okay. time. I don't know if you haven't heard it. I'm old. I so. haven't. So That's from the early 2000s. I just dated myself. Uh-huh. All right. But team building. What what do we what do we think? Um, if you're picking one of those, I would say the cooking and acting. But I always find the best team building comes when it's like you have to do something hard together. So maybe the obstacle course, depending on what the obstacle course is. Um, oh, ooh. I got oh, I got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your idea? Whoa. Dennis, I think they need to. Uh, I think they need to do the escape rooms. Because uh, I like pressure. that. Mm-hmm. You got to put something on the line too. It can't just be like if you don't get out of the escape room, then well, whatever. I guess we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to no put, game check. Yeah. Oh, something big. Oh. Like, oh, <laughs> no victory brisket or something. <laughs> something you got to have. I think there's got to be some pressure so that you know what to do when you're under pressure and you can work as right. a team together yeah. to get that accomplished. So. I'm going to go with the point break method of this. I think we have so skydiving. Skydiving. I think we have Coach Daly jumps out with a parachute. The rest of the team follows. No without parachute. parachutes. Ah. They all grab onto each other. <laughs> Staley pulls Pull the cord. It the very last second because he always goes just to the very last second. Of men. And, just, and then they all 
That would really build some. <laughs> Trey Pipkins died today after a team building exercise. <laughs> he was the second loop in the chain and, <laughs> and it all went down. Can you imagine how they would bond off over that though? Dude. Imagine. Oh, for life. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what, that would be the ultimate way to bring them together. Yeah. 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 One parachute. And then go rob a bank. 53 men. Yeah. <laughs> go rob a bank <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> All right, Lexi M., thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to OM Run, <laughs> who asked the question. Skydive, surf, rob a bank. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> so that was awful. And Herbert was bad. Is it the broken finger or the lack of Corey Lindsley? That O-line gave no protection, but he missed so many throws. To Kaden. I hope they can pull it together for the Chiefs. Corey Lindsley is a big, was so helpful for him. And he's had he some an anchor, best yeah. games with Corey. I saw him on the sideline. So there. I don't know. I think we're yeah. still another week away from that. He was IR. on IR, so two more. So two more. So Do they have to miss games or weeks? Because Good we had the question. bye week. Does that bye week count as one of the it's IR? It's got to count. Yeah, it should count. <laughs> it's got to count. It's yeah, got to count. It works better it's in our favor count. if it counts. <laughs> Why would it not count? Yeah, that makes sense. So also, I, is Jalen Guyton sure. alive? Anyone ever seen him? No, I, I, don't I haven't. Know. Yeah. What, what number is he? I don't know. I don't remember. That's Probably a, changed hey, it. Don't don't stress yourself out because you don't remember because he has been so long. <laughs> I he, don't remember. Exactly. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> yeah. Not hard to think about him either. Straight crickets, Jalen Guyton mm. front. Well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's okay. And yes, Herbert had a bad game. We've all had bad games. I've had a I bad was, day at the office. I, I was really surprised how big Will Clapp was. I didn't realize how he's a big man. He's like huge six, of a six, man. Six, he is six, five. He's huge. Yeah. I mean, and it, there was a point in the game where he was limping as well. Yeah, he got hurt. So yeah. I don't know what that, if that had constituted, you know, if he starts favoring a side and they take advantage of that or well, what the, the pressure was, was, wasn't fully coming up the middle. It was really, they were kind of bending and stunting around that right side. Like, yeah. Trey didn't have a good game. No, he he tends to give up the big moments. Um, it just sucks. It is what it is. He's yeah. not top tier tackle, but he's good enough. So if you give him help, they just didn't always give him help, and that was a problem. Yeah. So we, I just I was surprised we couldn't run the ball at all. Yeah. Like yeah. Not even a little bit. No. So um, yeah, that was definitely a, a tough landing for Austin coming back and getting like one of the worst fantasy football weeks of any of the running backs. So big time. Um, they'll step up. They'll be all right. Yeah. So, and, and I, do you think the finger has anything to do with, with no. Herbert? I don't think it's it does. This is non throwing in. Yeah. Right? So, OM Run, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Andrew Ramsey, who asked the question. I can't wait to meet you guys this Sunday. I'm happier than a tornado in a trailer park. I'm happier than a kid in a candy store. I'm happier than a sperm cell penetrating an egg in a Petri dish. <laughs> My one hope is that I get a big group photo with the CC gang. I'm talking Wool Dog, Kev Huggin' Duggin', Broads, Bolt Up Cat, and anyone else wanting to jump in. We'll even FaceTime Kyle, and I'll hold him in the palms of my left non-dominant hand. I don't really know what to say about the game, just a horrible game in general with flags galore. I do think it's time next season to cut ties with some of our big-name guys, taking up most of the cap space, Joey being one of them. Derwin's pushing it. Hot take <laughs> or bull take, LOL. Derwin's pushing it. <laughs> Something's got to give. If not the staff, then the players need some heat. Offense takes the blame big time tonight. Why is QJ a thing then? Where's Jalen? Why no Darius Davis tonight? What happened to the Kelly at combo? So many questions. Okay, love you. Bye. Derwin's pushing it. <laughs> uh, that was really funny. <laughs> pushing my buttons, Derwin. <laughs> yeah. Really getting Ooh. under my skin there, Derwin. You're pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah, dude. I hope I can't wait. We got to figure out where you are and we got to connect. But yeah, what's we'll the non dominant so. hand comment for? <clears throat> Am I non dominant? <laughs> Maybe beta. Oh, maybe. Is that a little beta. brother? I think you might. Have, is that a jab? There, that's actually <laughs> pretty funny. I might start using. I think that, that was a jab. Non-dominant. <laughs> I don't know what I've not dominated on this podcast. So I don't know why <laughs> you would think that. <laughs> oh shit! Oh uh, boy! Ah, just starting, 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 starting shit. trouble. You're pushing it. Yo, you're pushing it. <laughs> you thought Derwin was pushing it, Andrew. You're pushing it. <laughs> oh, shit. 
All right. Well, there's a lot of questions here. Um, as the big one, though, cutting ties with some of the big names. I mean, that's just going to have to be a necessity because of how uh, where the how money's going everywhere else. You just you can't pay everybody $30 million and expect to be under the salary cap. Yeah. It's, just, it's just weird. Some of these names that we've been a part of our life for so long. Yeah. And you're watching some of them play, and it's not like the output we're getting out of Thule is just destroying Joey. I know he's hurt, and he's just not showing up. He's right. always hurt. It's like, I like how do you if Joey's do here, Joey, you're always hurt, dude. Yeah, like, I don't feel bad saying that. To him. Yeah, yeah, like, you, what is the deal? Like, it just doesn't, yeah, the output for the amount of money he's getting paid, it's just not there. Yeah, yeah, um, it's but, but they're shocking. They're just, I don't know what they're gonna do. They always surprise us with restructuring and all right. the kind of shit they do. The easiest thing to say is we got to cut a whole bunch of people. I don't know what they're gonna do. It's gonna depend on what happens with the front office. If you get a new GM, it's potential that he does do giant make big overhaul type changes yeah because that's it he has no no room to work mm -hmm. you get a new gm with no salary cap he just has to come in and use the guys that you got so mm -hmm. yeah. um i think you get a i think if you get a new gm if for every reason that happens then then you can start talking about the big changes that might happen yeah um let's see what else was there uh why is qj a thing, a thing? <laughs> I, I want him to be a thing. We all want him to be a, th a bigger thing than he is right now. Yeah. Um, where's Jalen? I don't know. No or clue. We'll start a game show. Like, where in the world is Carmen Diego? Where's Waldo? Yeah. Where's yeah. I need to get on some. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? That's a good poll. <laughs> um, why no Darius Davis? We asked the same question. I think, Darius, I think Darius Davis was filling a role that Austin Eckler did when he was gone. But he was better you know, like, at it <laughs> than last no, night, not, at least. No, well, not yeah. Well, you, the Cowboys' defense is top five defense in the entire league. Against Minnesota, Minnesota sucks. Their run defense is god awful. The Raiders, <laughs> right? Like they suck. Right. So it, Am I right? you you have you you took a sample of Eckler against the Dallas Cowboys. Is Eckler a better f running back than Darius? Yes, Davis? I know yes. what you're saying. Is he better in space than Darius I Davis? Know. So that's that. I mean, we threw the screen. <laughs> We threw the screen to Eck. Eck was in that pistol formation. So that's just what that was. They they were trying to find a way to get Darius the ball and Eck was gone, but X back. So I would anticipate a much smaller role for Darius Davis. It's just showing off his non-dominant hand there, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my strong my, hand. <laughs> take my strong take hand. My strong hand. <laughs> what happened to the Kelly Eck combo? I don't know. Removed no from the menu. No side yeah. of fries tonight. <laughs> That's the value menu now. <laughs> no, no, you're getting only the sandwich. There's no soda or fries. Yeah, we're out yeah, of fries. dollar menu. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Andrew Ramsey, you're pushing it, but thank you for asking the question. <laughs> you are pushing <laughs> it, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you soon. Um, all right, let's move it on to Athir Kadir. Athir! Who asked Kadir? <laughs> Kevin, this is for you, my buddy, baby! All off season, you said different OC will be the difference between the Chargers losing to the Chiefs or beating the Chiefs. Well, this week coming, give me some hope and show me some love that this year will be different, baby. Love you, FTR Herbo MVP Chargers country. Let's ride, baby. Give him, hey, this is for you, big guy. Yeah. Uh, dominant hand. The non-dominant hand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I still have a lot of hope and excitement for Kellen Moore. I don't know what happened last night. He's now a gif. I don't know if you saw like oh, God, that. Yeah. I hated the cameras were on him when that, that was happened. a tough look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, you could tell that game was emotional for him with the reactions like that. Yeah. Absolutely. So I wasn't thrilled with how it played out, but I don't know if that's scheming per se last night. It was just a couple missed throws. Yeah. I thought they were able to get shit done. We were decent in the red zone. I think yeah. we were two for Two for it's four. The fourth down. Um, anything, it's just fourth down. Fourth like down. he's trying. Yeah. We're not th running the ball anymore. He's throwing the ball on fourth down. And there's just, I don't know, our fourth down offense is is to me what is like, just stop doing it. We're not that's not us. We're not good at that. No. Yeah. So and there think, seemed to be some miscommunication too. There was a weird play where Austin. Where, yeah, Austin was lined up on the outside. It looked like Justin Herbert was telling him to come in, and uh, you could see Austin shake his head. <laughs> yeah, no. I was like, well, don't talk, don't say no to our don't talk back. back yeah <laughs> shut up austin it was just no. weird like you it, it was I like one two no yeah. he literally went like this yeah to, to justin yeah he was like shaking his head and stop it 
No. Like, I'm out here now. This is I'm my not, spot. I, I it took me a long Justin, time you to get out deal here. With I'm it. not coming yeah. back. Yeah. It, it, so it was just awkward. Like, you don't see that ever. Like, the, there was some miscommunication, not on the same page moments. And it maybe played throughout the whole game that they just weren't on the same page. So I just, and I don't think the Chiefs defense is going to be as good as what we just saw. I just don't think they're going to be. They're pretty good. They're not that good. <laughs> that defensive line is not as good as the, as the Cowboys. Good. So hey. hopefully, hope, hey, here's that thing. Hopefully they got, you know, we didn't do so well this game. They got a taste of it. It's like, it's a bad analogy, but I used to practice hockey with like a really, like really heavy puck. Mm. So when you do that, after you take it away and do the regular puck, you can control it and yeah. it just mm. helps you. So my, that's my thought for this game. We really just had a tough one where we had to give it everything and we were t playing a tough defensive line and, and you know, they played well against us. So yeah. they'll answer back and we're always close with the Chiefs, man. It's going to be one possession. Yeah. It just is. No, is. one score game. Always. <laughs> it's going to be one score. Chiefs. No. Oh, it's almost on. as if we shouldn't watch the first three quarters because no. it doesn't matter. Only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, cool play, but it doesn't matter because we'll see what happens with four minutes left. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a good game against the Chiefs. I still think we can absolutely It'll always be good games. They're always going to be close, good games. So it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited for that game. Yeah. I really am. Same. Good. So you should be excited too, Athir. Thank you for asking the question. And we go out of Ask Bolt Fan with D. Kane to Bolt Main. Certified for us. I don't think so. No. Who asked the question? Shit. Vuss up, guys. It's been quite some time since I asked you my last question about JC's contract status right after his injury. I'm really happy he is gone now to intoxicate the environments of another team. He was a pain in the ass, just like Tillery, and I'm really looking forward to see both getting their asses whooped by our team. Now, I've got great news, and I'm really happy everything has worked out that well since I was accepted as a member of the German Die Hard Bowl Club chapter. <laughs> this is great, and I'm really happy that I could find some good people who share the same fate as me. The other great news is that I will be coming over to the U.S. for the Bears game. Rawr. I'm really looking forward <laughs> to the trip. And right now, the excitement is already rising. Now, my question is related to the trip. Do you have any ideas how to organize my game day? Are there any spots that we, you would recommend to start the day before tailgating? And is there anything special that you would propose to visit during my stay in L.A. and San Diego? Kalos, you buy and bolt up. Sincerely yours, Dominic. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> You're not certified fresh <laughs> at all. Is DK support me? I know. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have such a fun name that it, I think Kevin just got excited. Like, it's exciting. <laughs> but congrats on the DHBC Germany. That's, That's what I'm awesome. talking about. I love the awesome. international diehard bowl club. And you're coming out for you're a coming game? for a home game. Oh, dude. that's gonna be a blast. Yeah, dude. That's gonna be badass. All right. So, so what should we do? Obviously, I mean, he's already talking about tailgating, so that's not the question. It's more what is there to do or any well, I would recommend. Yeah, what do you recommend? I would recommend you shotgun a beer to start your day. 100 <laughs> percent Yep. German is optional, but any beer of choice yep. uh to start your day. Um, as far as visiting places, um, I love Disneyland. <laughs> Pretty good. Universal's pretty fun. Universal's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of theme parks out here to visit if that's of your, you know, up your alley. And you're right next to the beach, you know, yeah, so you can definitely nice go, check, go out, check out like, the pier and go do all that stuff is really nice. I don't know how much time you have, but that's really yeah. fun. Um, I think it's important where you stay for like, yeah. game day. It's it's kind of up to you where you go, but right. um, if you're there for a, a lot of time, I wouldn't stay near the stadium. I just get a ride over there. Mm. Um, but if it's like you're there for like a little bit, stay near the stadium for sure. Yeah. They have like hotels and stuff right there, so that's what I would And recommend. definitely come to San Diego. San Diego is awesome. You have the San Diego Zoo, the SeaWorld, yeah. the beaches are incredible. Yeah. The Mexican food is gonna say knock your socks definitely off. Get some Mexican food, yeah. Dude. yeah. Do downtown. Downtown's super fun. The nightlife, if you want to go do that, gas lamp. Mm -hmm. It's it's the best. San Diego is awesome. So definitely hit just any any web search that you come up with will give you 
20 awesome things to do in San Diego. Yeah. LA, I can't speak to. And Inglewood, I definitely can't speak to. <laughs> I will I will say this. Just a full recommendation. If you see a really crummy looking Mexican food restaurant, like it doesn't look good at all. Like from the outside. And it ends in Bertos. Go in and probably good. You it's go in there amazing. and you yeah. just, I would just try all the Mexican food in LA and San Diego because mm-hmm. you don't get better Mexican food than those two places. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. There's some recommendations for you. Decane to Bolt, Maine. If anybody else has recommendations for him, please put Hit them down up. in the comments. Let them know where Decane to Bolt, Maine, our German diehard Bolt Club chapter member Let's go. can visit and do. Awesome. Um, thank you for asking the question and thank you everybody for asking questions today. I know it was a rough game and there was a lot of questions to sit through. I apologize if I didn't get to them, but Hey, there's always next week, baby. It was a fun game until the end. Yeah. It was fun until it was, it was promising. (laughs) If you look at it that way, like we had like 55 minutes of fun. Yeah. And I think I saw some stat where we had four, uh, we have 20 sacks so far in the first five games. That's and big. it's the most since like the eighties for us. Yeah. So wow. we got some good shit going on Truly, guys. Yeah. We just got to get them going. Truly the and Khalil time. are Let's fucking go. Yeah. yeah. Come on boys. Give me the, give me the tea. Let's go. And we're going to beat the chiefs this coming weekend. That's right. We man. are. I'm telling you it because it's a fact. It's a secret. Don't tell anybody. Don't, don't he's in a don't house. Chiefs. He's in a house with chief fans right now. <laughs> so he's whispering. Don't say it. Yeah, we're definitely winning this weekend. They heard it. Oh, they heard it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Sorry to right. crush your hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being a part of Asbolt Fam. I think that's going to do it for us this week. Any final thoughts there, gentlemen? Have a great week, guys. Don't get too bummed out. Get yeah. excited. We're Go outside. Fun. Get some fresh air. Get some exercise. Yeah, take a break from X. Take care of you. Yeah, you time. <laughs> They're all great guys. All right. (laughs) That's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, loves you. Bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Do you find yourself stressed? Need a break? Something to help calm you down? Then you might need the help from the Calmer Palmer. The Calmer Palmer creates essential oils for you that help calm you throughout the day with scents like Pipkin's Frankincense, Tuli Patchouli, Lavender Eckler, and Tea Tree Staley. So call today and relax like a Charger fan with the Calmer Palmer, now available in two and three ounce bottles.